All right. I was just saying to these boys, Happy New Year. Happy New Year, by the way, to everybody listening. But you can't write this shit. This is how my holidays started. The Friday before the holidays started. I'm going to tell this story real quick because it can drag on and I've been known to drag stories on, so I'm not going to do that. So let's do this quick. It was the Friday before holidays. My wife had scheduled an eye exam for me because I need reading glasses I guess because I'm getting old I'm 43 right things I can't see my watch too well like I look at my watch I'm like I don't quite know what the temperature is so I better need some reading glasses right so she had put in an appointment for an eye exam on the Friday right before holidays right so okay boom my work isn't supposed to be very busy so I'm like that's a perfect day to go do an eye exam I don't know what an eye exam consists of I just check my eyes and let me pick my fucking glasses so we go into the eye exam place right okay check this boom she's like I'm gonna have to give you the doctor she's like I'm gonna have to give you some of these eye drops yeah things might get a little blurry things might get a little weird I'm like yeah whatever doc just put it in my eyes let's get this over with I gotta get back boom she puts them in my eyes and yeah sure enough two minutes later three minutes five minutes later I can't see shit like really like everything is gone everything looks like a cloud I'm like this isn't good I gotta go back to work and she's like hey it'll take three four hours before this shit goes away I'm like I gotta go work <laughs> <laughs> so my lady drives me home and I'm literally blind at my oh, computer man. screen I can't work so Good thing my lady last Christmas had bought me like these reading because she knew she saw it happening. My eyes weren't going too good with reading. So she had bought these like Amazon like bullshit reading glasses, right? So she hands them to me. She said, does this work? I can do the work for me. I'm like, no, sweetheart, you want? So I look, oh, just barely it works. That's good. So I'm working, I'm working. One of the side effects, supposedly, which my doctor didn't tell me is your ears can go. All of a sudden, my ear explodes, and I can't hear out of my ear. I'm blind, and I'm going deaf as I'm working before my holidays. Now, it sounds like it's terrible, right? Oh, yeah, it'll all clear up. That's good. No, 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 no. Here's how the day ends. So I decide, you know what? I got to get the fuck out of here, and I go for a run. So I go for a nice run. I'm trying to pop my ear, think something's wrong. I'm like, ah, this is crazy. My eyes, I can barely see. I'm running at nighttime at Tommy Thompson Park. I'm like, ah, this is probably not a good idea, but who's going to fuck with me, this deaf, blind dude running through the park? Anyways, I get back home. I sit down. My ear clears up. Perfect. My eyes hey. clear up. I'm feeling good, right? Hey. So I go, oh, I'm good. I'm going to have a sh- I'm going to have my cheap meal. I call one night only. I'm like, a I need my, pe- hey, I my cheap meal. Nice. So I come get my pizza sent to the house. Perfect. Everything's good. I look over at my lady on the couch. I'm like, things turned out okay today. She's like, you know, just breathe. I'm like, okay, okay. Go ahead, hand me that hot sauce. Okay, good. So we sit down. I swear to God, boys. I swear to God, you can't write this shit. My second piece of pizza in. I've started eating it. I'm like, the fuck was that I had a feeling from like 15 years ago that just decides to say fuck you (laughs) and pops out I had all a tooth disappear in one day I went blind I went deaf and I started losing teeth for the holidays I had to get emergency dental surgery the next day to get this shit fixed nobody's open I found a place on Coxwell boom get there that was wow. my holidays, man. I'm just shout glad out this to shit's... folks that open up for business on the holidays, man. God bless that dentist. Mm-hmm. I had my I had my lady and my daughter switch their dentist to this dentist that day. Anyway, <laughs> welcome back everybody to the Sports Ethos Toronto Raptor podcast, and I'm your host, Mr. El Hoopo, the H Double O P O, and we're back. We got A Rod, A R O D, and Mr. Max Profit. You better pay me. It's 2024, and we are re-upped. We've rebagged, and we're ready to service our product to the streets. Let's go. What's up, boys? Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy Happy New Year. The way happy you tell that story guys. was like a Wu Tang song, man. Like, <laughs> then I get the cream joints. Boom. <laughs> then my tooth falls out. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I thought that's... I was listening to Holy Bill for Cuban Link for a second. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, you can't make that shit up, man. It actually happened. Oh, I was like, oh, my man. God. Like, that, what can go worse? And it's funny, at the end of my run, because every Christmas before that, every, something always happened. I caught COVID when COVID first came out. I tore my bicep tendon on the other Christmas before yeah. that. Anyways. That's right. I remember that. Remember that? Yeah, the exclusive COVID before anybody even got it. <laughs> you know, that, that COVID was the one where Toronto Health was calling you at home going, where were you? 
Where'd oh. you go? <laughs> Man. Well, you're at I no frills? Oh, you oh. really? You're at no frills, huh? They were I checking me like seen, the... yeah. Oh, it's crazy. I literally seen police like start pulling people over right in front of my building. Yeah. Just like pe- people riding their bike or something just walking down the street. It was wild times. That was when I caught mm-hmm. it. And I felt te- I felt like I felt like they should send my kids to to adopt like like adoption place. Because <laughs> I felt like what happened? Yeah, like am I bad? Am I a knew. terrible parent? Like, yeah. What's wrong with you? Nobody knew what was going on. It was like, mm-hmm. oh, you got the plague. You got the plague. <laughs> <laughs> well, speak. Let's get into it, boy. Speaking of the plague, let's get into it. Let's get into this first things first. Let's get, we'll, we'll talk about the trade. We'll have a whole section about this trade because I really want to get it going with you boys dun, about that. Dun, but let's dun. get into them. Exactly. Let's get into it though. First thing on the dinner plate is last night, the Toronto Raptors and their new good vibes traveled into Memphis, Hennessy. And the T. Hey. Dot Mafia took a big win 116 to the Grizz 111. Give me one word. Hit me, A Rod. First forty-eight, man. Yes, sir. First forty-eight, man. You know mm. why? Because man, I seen so many people catch bodies on that show, and the Raptors just caught one with Memphis, man. <laughs> Holy! <Sure did. laughs> yeah, I don't even care is. if that game was a little closer <laughs> in the end, man. These guys were just feeding them, man. Like, mm-hmm. like and they didn't it was, stop. It was good, man. It was good. I was enjoying it. Uh, you know, it was a good start to the new year. I mean, even more so than the Cleveland game. Uh, I think mm. because you know, like. I don't really care about Donovan Mitchell. I don't really care about Cleveland. I don't even care about Ohio no. in general. There's not really any studs on that team. You <laughs> said Ohio in general. Yeah. <laughs> the mistake like, by the lake. There yeah, it is. but like, um, <laughs> man, Memphis, Memphis got some, they got some guys on there where you're like, okay, these guys are, are fun to watch. Yeah. They got John, and the, they got yeah, Desmond they Bain, the they got, they got Jerry Jackson Jr. You know, All the young they got Santi watching. Aldama. <laughs> Santi Aldama. <laughs> so, David Roddy. Yeah, they got mm-hmm. dudes, man. So, you know what? At least it was more fun to watch them. Uh, and I was like, you know what? Step up in the competition. Because mm-hmm. Memphis was playing better as of late. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was just nice to see the Raptors do their thing, man. It was, Doesn't it was good. Xavier Tillman look like he should work at a car wash? He, he probably works. He probably <laughs> worked at one in college, man. I mean, yeah, the guy went to Michigan State. Did. Did he? I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure he did something. Yeah, there. Yeah, oh, he got blue collar all over. <laughs> he does. What, what about mm-hmm. one word for you, Max? Oh, uh, prime time. Hey, I like that. Yeah, prime time. It felt like uh, it felt like those guys just finished listening to or watching one of those Deion Sanders motivational videos <laughs> or something, and they just came out like playing good, yeah. looking good, feeling good. You know, like everybody looked like new money. Yes. Yes. Well, mm-hmm. I, I, for me, it was I had to go because they were in the land of Memphis. Uh, I had to go three six mafia, and then they they were feeling. Now I'm high. Now I'm really really high. Mm-hmm. They, they hypnotized minds that night last mm-hmm. night. So mm-hmm. I was very happy to see it. And you know, it's funny we were talking before this before we hit record here how it kind of like there's a re, re well we'll get into it. There, there's a there's a good vibe right now. I must say so. Yes. Maybe my word is good vibes. All right, let's get into it. What, let, well, maybe we can step out of the, step in the game for a little bit. What what did you see that you liked? Was there anything that you want to bring up before we get into the trade? So hit me. Uh, I'll hit you with uh, quickly, man. We'll get into uh, the trade afterwards, but mm-hmm. you know, I'll, I'll say this: first quarter, I wasn't really a fan of his shot selection, but I understand why it was the way it was because mm-hmm. these guys are still learning how to play together on the fly. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was missing a few and also taking some shots that weren't really quite his type of shots because I've watched him play for a while now, right? But seeing him like progress through the game, man. And then this guy just started to go young Dolph on him, 100 shots, <laughs> man. Just getting everything in there, man. Yes, yes. Yes, oh, yes. that was just. I, was, I heard, I I heard was at hyped. halftime that um, Darko went up to him and said, Listen, it looks like you're not having fun. And and he said, I want you to go out there, have fun, shoot, just go have mm-hmm. fun. And and uh, quickly said, or IQ said after that in the interview, he said, I've never had a coach speak to me like that and and, and come at me like that. And it just felt so good and freeing. Well, so, coming from Thibodeau, I, I mean, know, man. Well, coming imagine. from Thibodeau, everybody, man. everybody go come off like like an angel, you know? What I mean? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> That's true. But I, hey, what, what about you, Max? Anything like I, I like that take on quickly, man. Because honestly, to stay on the quickly thing before you, Max, sorry, is that, uh, man, 
let's start the the push. This guy's better than Maxi, right? That's Come on, what I'm saying. Hey. I'm gonna I, say I mean, it. I'm gonna say it and I'll I put still it need a line. little bit of pushing. I still need. A, I'm, mm, I'm a root for the one, guy. Man. I'm a root for the guy, but I still need a little bit of pushing. Maxie's on my fantasy team. He's growing that thing <laughs> up. Oh, man, that Blow day I traded up. for quickly. That day I traded Jeremy Grant. <laughs> right. Jeremy Grant for him, and I got him in my other league. I'm I, I should love trade Jaden Ivey for him. Man, me I too. love quickly since college. Oh yeah, that's my guy. I like Maxie too. Don't get me wrong. They're backcourt yeah, yeah. mates, man. But quickly yeah. is my guy, man. So for oh me, yeah, quickly is nice, man. I just man. waited, Watch waited for that chance for him to get an actual good chance and a good and then, position. Oh, you can't yeah. get that. And yeah. now yeah. it's just like he's here. Let's see what you got, man. Take Roll. that leap, mm -hmm. man, because he's he's been taking leaps his whole, you know, sub NBA career. Mm -hmm. The Thibodeau wall, though, just you look at his game yeah. log, like if in New York, it's this like man looked like Tim Robbins on a Shawshank, man, crawling through that shit, dude. And he just <laughs> he got was, yeah, he's trapped. He was trapped <laughs> he in the in the Thibodeau. There, man. <laughs> oh, man. He's trapped in the Thibodeau machine. Like yeah. the word is with Thibodeau is he don't want nobody getting shots other than his main um, yeah. guy, and then maybe mm -hmm. the second guy. But it's nobody else gets shots. Nah, no matter how I, good I you are for a coach and like so that. if you're like somebody who deserves more shots he's going to literally suppress you because yeah. he has a philosophy of only certain guys get the shots so playing yeah. for Thibodeau if you're not number one it's it's not going to work for you yeah he's a frustrated chronic masturbator <laughs> Thibodeau <laughs> man, you remember what he did even with Jimmy man even Jimmy wasn't the number one dude under him Jimmy just played yeah, and it's because he was always good on defense. But man, D yeah. Rose is that guy, you know. Yeah, yeah, and, Even, he, and, he, and he wore D Rose out because the top guy gets all the shots, all the work. Killed, bro. He it killed Eric Rose. Well, that's what he does. Dang that's what he does. More shots. Well, Dang and Taj Gibson. Yeah, yeah. Those guys were getting cussed, the, yeah. cussed every time they shot the ball too. I guarantee you. <laughs> Would you guys Thibodeau... think of that that nickname <laughs> barbecue? Barbecue is Barnes. Uh, uh, oh, RJ and quickly. quickly barbecue, and then they add in pa Pascal, and there they're called the spicy barbecue. <laughs> okay, oh, I, I, I mean, <laughs> I know, whatever, man. man. It'd be t uh, spicy uh, temporarily. <laughs> spicy, yeah, exactly. I mean, we hope not. Uh, we hope. I that mean, goes away. that spicy P name is horrible. Any change, Terrible. any adjustment, any yeah. kind of adjustment in that name is an improvement. Goodness gracious! What else you boys see? Was there anything else before we get out of the game? But I. It, for me, it was I, I was looking on the other side on Memphis. Is is Ja? Ja looks good. He I think he was out the night uh, prior though Before, because yes. because yes. he 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 got that dunk over Wemby and I think he went out the night after because he looked to me like he was his body just wasn't doing what he wanted to do and even though he had a massive massive line. By yeah, the end he's of the still game. not in shape. He's still not in shape. Yeah, no. he's still not in game shape. No. Yeah. I've seen a game like, where he was in the hallway just weaving like trying to catch oh, really? his breath yeah with like you know like hunched over and then he came back in the game playing but you know yeah, he's still out of shape some like um mm -hmm. like i had like a puffer on the bench did you see that mm -hmm. it was like this long yeah and it was just like Bro. what are you doing are you taking holes Bro. off the bong here hits from the bong but anyways all right if you boys are done with that game we'll jump into this trade let's man let's jump into the trade because uh, uh, all right all right all right here we go here I was go. sick as fuck. I wasn't feeling well. All of a sudden, I get text messages. Boom, boom, boom. What? I'm reading what? Huh? Brett Raptors traded OG mm -hmm. to the Knicks? True. What was your first impression? A-Rod hit me. And actually, give me your whole rundown of this 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 trade. What, what do you see? What do you got? It was, it was strange, man, because when I saw it, I thought, like, okay. And I was just trying to process it and... To be honest, I've been asking for OG and I've been asking for the Raptors to make a trade for a while now, right? So we all it finally have. came and it was just kind of like a surreal moment. Yeah. But mm -hmm. then, you know, if you look at this whole season, I know Pascal been playing well lately with Scotty. It's almost like he's, you know, been having an audition for a trade and to pump up his value. Yeah, but yep. I, it was weird because I always thought Pascal would be the guy to go before OG because it just made more sense we to have did. somebody mm -hmm. who was like a shooter as opposed to like a secondary ball handler with Scotty. Yeah. Because I thought they were going full on Scotty point forward mode, but it was nice to see that trade go through. And then the first thing I thought was, okay, great, we made a trade. 
And then I thought, oh, fuck, quickly, amazing. Like, I love mm. this, man. Like, finally, we get an actual point guard. We get a guy who can develop and go year over year. Like, I always thought he had the potential to be better than Maxi. So it was just like, okay, yes, we can finally see this. But then I saw the RJ thing, and I was like, oh, mm. man, I'm kind of torn. Like, not because he went to Duke. That's a big thing. But, like, it's more because this guy, <coughs> he's Canadian, and he's from here. You want to mm -hmm. support him. But also, it doesn't really make sense with him there because his game and the way he's developed the last four years, he is not a shooter. So it's like, how many ball handlers are you going to have on this team? Like, this is just going to be really weird because he doesn't really understand floor spacing either, coming from New York with all these forwards there. Yeah. Like, his game has been really hindered. It could be better. So maybe in, like, a year it gets better working with the Raptors guys. But he has never been a, a strong shooter. He's been a better finisher. Ever yeah. since college, he was even like that too, right? So, it we're gonna have to see how this works out. Me personally, I hope for another trade. I hope we like let go of spicy, get another, uh, you know, shooter or a stretch forward, even a center who can like stretch the floor. I don't know something like just yeah. get rid of him because man, it I can't see it being that good down down the road. Mm. What about you, Max? What, what what did you? What was your vibe? Um, I was more positive. I felt like um, after seeing them play. Uh, that second game, I felt like everybody kind of locked into where they were supposed to be. Mm. It, it really felt like uh, Dennis coming off the bench, um, RJ RJ being the energy guy, um, Barnes quickly, Siakam sort of being the main guys. And um, I think with the trade, it got rid of some of the ego, some of that weird tension I think everybody knows it's Barnes's team. Mm -hmm. Quickly and Quickly's here as like sort of the new Kyle Lowry to uh like remember when DeMar DeRozan took that next step? Yeah. When Kyle yeah. Lowry came? Yeah. I think Quickly is here to take help, help Barnes take that next step, right? And yeah, it'll be so. Barnes and Quickly and yeah. um and that, and they're going we're going to ride those guys as far as we can and Siakam's feeling like okay let me just get in where i fit in barnes knows i mean um rj knows he gotta get in where he fits in i don't think yeah. he's going to i don't think he's going to interrupt with things um schroeder knows schroeder knows okay i gotta get in where i fit in i don't think he's going to do jordan mode um it just feels like if, yeah like another trade is probably coming but seeing game two i felt like wow everything seemed to kind of just lock in the place like the like that um, Rubik's Cube. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny mm -hmm. is I checked the uh, the Knicks game, the first Knicks game with o OG's uh, first game at Madison Square Garden. And it's yeah. funny, the first, I think I texted you boys this, but it was like two minutes in, first... <laughs> I, what I hear, I'm like, oh yeah, OG is on the court. It's like, oh, OG and an OB slips and falls. <laughs> it's like, it's like, oh man. But I think it's a nice fit for New York. I, I, I to jump on. I watched that him side. last night. Watched yeah. him last night. He looked good. You people, guys are good people. Men, man. He, as soon as he got out of the building, I'm like, fuck this guy. I never want to watch him play again. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. It's like, I think people overvalued him. I think there's a there's oh, a, definitely. There's a complete time, overvalue. Come on, we of robbed him. we robbed New York. Completely robbed him. The first we, thing I thought when I saw the trade was born Yanni. We did o it again. OG, we burnt him again. Because quickly Messiah, there's man. no reason we should be able to get a player like quickly no. so cheap like that. Like, come no. on. Anybody who watched the New York Knicks play two or three times knows that quickly Loves guys. Quickly. Nice. Anybody that nice. loves hoops sees quickly. He's like, oh, this guy. Okay, nice. that guy's nice. You yeah, know, but yeah. we got him basically like for nothing. Come on, man. That's and crazy. he's having fun out there too. Oh, and, I don't know how we got him for just OG at an OP and a second round pick. <laughs> and, I, and to speak on uh, RJ as well is that you know people, I, I just I mute it when they are hyping him up on the whole Canada Maple Jordan thing, uh, Maple Mamba. He gets hype. I don't. I don't uh, see that. Like Leo yeah. Rounds and them, they're just they're oh, wow. all about RJ. Like like RJ is the main part of the trade, not quickly. No like, come way. On, no no come way. On. To see, me, I don't RJ. Even watch those guys. No disrespect to RJ, but RJ is the filler in my mind. RJ is the obviously. filler in this trade, yeah, obviously. Right? But it's not potatoes. obvious to the to to. To a lot of folks out here. So, Ooh, anyways, well, with the one thing I do us, see, <laughs> a lot of what I see though, the one thing I do like, what I see with RJ is that what I didn't know is this guy has got he's some sandpaper. Like he goes for it. He's strong. Like he he does have this chip on his shoulder that I didn't know about. I haven't watched him enough and knew mm -hmm. enough about him, but he goes in lefty. 
and bangs we you. Might and I, have, and it, we, we might have what Beverly, what Patrick Beverly said we don't have before. Boy, I think we have more. A dog. Of a look of it for sure. I think RJ can be our dog. Oh, uh, I our, hope so. Our, our annoying, just dive on balls, I'm going to get fouled out, so what kind of guy, you know? Marcus Smart type of oh, he annoyed trouble. Me last night, wow. Mm-hmm. Oh. But yeah, I hope so. I hope we so. Need we, some, yeah, we need some, some, some of that, you know? Maybe he can slide into that spot. What's your RJ take, Ava? Uh, you know, like I was saying, man, I think his game doesn't really fit in here for what we want to do right now with the roster. Yet. Yeah. Yet. So uh, I got to see what happens with him over the year because maybe the team helps develop him into more of a catch and shoot guy. Maybe. No way. <laughs> Listen, we don't know. I, I, listen, I don't know what the plan is for him, right? I just know when I saw him, you know, get traded here and I read it, I was like, oh, this is not going to fit. Like, it just doesn't Bricks for make, hands. It was more it of like a PR sense. move. And then, you know, Matt and uh, Jack were like, oh, he's been shooting 80-something percent from the no, line. I'm like, oh, bro, stop that this talk. man don't stop shoot that. 80% yeah, from the line. I'm watching he's for years. Bricks for hands. Come on. He's, we all know this. <laughs> he's not that guy, man. But, like, no, listen, I want him to succeed because he's on our team now. <laughs> he's from here. He we got to support this guy. Like, I know a lot of people that know him personally to say he's a nice guy and know his dad yeah. too. But I want him to do really, really well here. You know, just like I think we all do. But for me, seeing quickly come here, I was like, that this is this is the trade for me. This gets me actually excited. Yes. You know, that Cleveland game, I went, I sat down in front of my TV, I yeah. watched the ten minute pregame, <laughs> I watched the whole game, watched the halftime show, I yeah. listened to these idiots talk about stuff. I didn't mute it. Like Damn. I was I wasn't annoyed, I was just excited, man. Yeah. So like a kid I, again, right? Yeah, uh-huh. it felt it felt nice, man. So I, that's really one thing you, I don't want to forget to say is that the one thing I notice is the rotations now are so much better and so much more yes. options yes. for dark. I'm telling you that Ruby's yeah. cute thing, like it kind of like, like oh, precious that one game, that one game. Mm-hmm. Oh, great! You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like oh, mm-hmm. there oh, goes yeah. there goes the quarter. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, precious and Malachi would just like you know yeah. bad. You know when that Meat loaf weirdo. And you know, when that weirdo shows up at your table at the restaurant and it just kills the vibe. Like yeah. when those guys subbed in, it kind of felt like that. Yeah, like, everything man, goes. We, it's not going to improve with these guys. Right here. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> I don't know, boys. I just I, I'm I'm li- a little bit more optimistic now about the team. Yeah. yeah. If I could, if I had have a uh, a dream fulfilled for 2024, get Pascal, Murray. Get Pascal out of here. Yes. For, Ke- for Keegan Murray. That's, that's a dream, man. I was watching him play the other man, day, too. Oh, Just get him out of here for Keegan Murray, and I'm a happy man, man. Because we I'm need getting, a guy I'm, like that, man. Somebody I'm getting, more in the age range of these guys. And yeah. also with that kind of skill set, like I'm getting catch, tight with the like sack fly. guys on us uh, at Sport Eth- at Sports Ethos. Yeah. And I talk to them like daily, and uh, I'm like, yeah, I mentioned I was like, yeah, we want we want Keegan here, and they're like, he untouchable, 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 <laughs> not gonna have untouchable, untouchable. I'm like, well, we'll see. This is Masai we're talking about here, and Masai is back now. He's got the ski mask back on, like oh, yes, after sir. This trade. Let's yeah. go, let's go. Yeah. All right, how well, did we go. get quickly? <laughs> oh. Oh. all right boys i over the holidays i, I actually i fell when i was running first time in three three thousand kilometers I, i've i've fallen and i was like i need to find something to like an ointment or something for my knee like do you guys know of any shops mm. around the city that sell mm. ointments like uh, to heal i know they won't uh, record you and put it on a meme so maybe popeyes man uh, popeyes, popeyes supplements is definitely the spot <laughs> <laughs> if you fall running and you need to find some ointments or you need to find some proteins, go find yourself with your two shoes on or maybe one clog and find yourself at Popeye's Supplements and ask them, hey, I need some ointments and protein. They'll help you out. This next, and you know what that means, everybody. So this next segment of this or... or the- that <laughs> this or the, the, that <laughs> is brought to you by Popeye's supplements. All right, boys, let's do this. I've been waiting for this one. Yes, this one's yes. gonna be good because, as I said, we were in Memphis, Hennessy, and so I'm gonna Hennessey. start off. Mm, I'm gonna Chop start off screwed. Right, absolutely. So I'm gonna start off right away with with a, with a street fight. We'll go street fight. We're gonna go old school. We're not gonna do any Raptors. We're gonna do old old school Grizzlies. Okay, and this is a this is a heavyweight battle right here. Okay, so we got old school Bryant Reeves. Oh, wow, big country, big Power machine country. 
<laughs> versus Steven Adams. <laughs> hey. <laughs> so you got Brian Reeves, who hay, is hay bale and ass. You cannot. Okay, I'm not going to give away who I got on this one. But you got Brian Reeves against Steven Adams. A-Rod, who do you got? Steven Adams, man. Yes, I, I, Listen, I've been around for the big country era, man. Mm -hmm. He was just a big dude, but he didn't really have that kind of toughness and greediness to him, man. Steven Adams would show up on your front porch, man. He'd be like, what What are you, a Jehovah or something? And this guy would just do that haka right in front of you, man. <laughs> and he'd scare the shit out of your mom. Like, <laughs> that dude is just, he's scary, man. Yeah. <laughs> and, he took, and he took a direct kick in the nuts from Draymond, man. Oh. How many people can have that claim to fame? I'm just Goodness saying. Goodness gracious. Yeah, he is. He's a monster. All right, so Jeez. we got one nothing. Steve, Steven Adams, Mr. Steven Adams. What you got, Max? Oh, uh, before I answer, I need a little bit of information. Mm -hmm. That big dude from the X Men that used to wear the helmet, Juggernaut. <laughs> Juggernaut. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. is this is Juggernaut from mm. Marvel and versus Aquaman from DC. This is <laughs> this is a crossover. <laughs> this is a crossover classic right here for all my mm. comic book folks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But uh, I'm going with Steven Adams, man. Come on, yeah. like he was, he was uh, ride or die with Westbrook. He's ride or die with John Morant. I heard uh, he's that, one of the best teammates to have too. He's one of the. He's a super cool guy. Have you ever like just seen him like talking in interviews? Like he's yeah. super, like true and real. And that yeah. that that incident with Shannon Sharp, where he was trying oh, to like yeah. get. And the way um, Steven Adams was just standing there, like, try something, man. Like, with anyone of these guys, I'll, I'll crush you like a soda can. <laughs> I'll eat you. Uh, all right, so we got 2 nothing, Steven Adams. You know what? I, obviously, obviously, I'm going to go Steven Adams. But I, I thought to myself, I'm like, what, what, how could Bryant Reeves, big country, win in that fight if he had any chance? And the one thing I thought about was just by looking at Bryant Reeves, I grew up with some of these guys, this, you can <laughs> see the cuts from the hay in his hands. <laughs> you know he's been hay bailing, right? Like, And I don't know if anybody out there who's listening has ever hay bailed before, but if you've ever hay bailed, even for 15 minutes, that shit is hard work. It is no joke. So Country yes, Steve, strength is different. Country strength, and look at him, he has zero <laughs> definition, but I guarantee underneath oh, that yeah, yeah, yeah. is a strong <laughs> big country. So I'm going to give him a shot, and I'm going to say, Stephen Adams, no disrespect. I'm a huge fan of you as well, but I think that Bryant's going to catch you on an off day, and he's going to be coming in, and he's going to get all that hay bale strength, and he's going to just, just one punch, bam. You're out. Oh, can't sleep on that country strength. No. So two, <laughs> two, one, Stephen Adams, but Stephen Adams wins. All right. Yes. Now we're going to jump into music. Seeing, man, I, I just looked up Memphis classic music. I knew of some, but man, the music that has come out of Memphis, yeah, yeah. like people from there, like you got oh, it's, it's Isaac insane. Hayes, it's Al Green, like it, the list it's goes yeah, on it's, and on. It's insane. It just, I just watched a documentary on Stax Records alone. Man. And that thing was like a, a time capsule in music. Just the one record label. It was insane. Unbelievable. Memphis, yeah, Memphis is crazy. Then all so, the rappers. You, exactly. So I exactly. So you're <laughs> you're on my same vibe right now. So I had to do I had to split it up. So I'm gonna do one where who partied more and uh and then one who you got between the two groups. So I'm gonna do that first. So two rap groups, first thing, okay? And I think you probably already know who, who I got here, but the legends. We got three six mafia. mafia. All right. World domination. All right. We got mm -hmm. three six mafia versus Ball and G, eight ball and MJG. Oh wow! Coming out hard. Are you kidding me? Who do you got? I forgot they were from Memphis. Ball and G. Look at this picture. Ball and G. <laughs> or three six mafia. I'm still going with three six, man. You want three, three six? Three six is like, I mean, they're Oscar winners, man. But <laughs> <laughs> but it's nice or not, man. I mean, dude, come on, like without getting too much into it, because we're gonna keep it PG thirteen, but. Slob on my knob, man. man. Late night tip. Like, whew. Late night tip. Get about yeah. it. Half on a sack. It. What? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah. man. Smoke, doubt. Lope, 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 doubt. Yeah. <laughs> Who do you got, Max? So we got one for three, six. Triple six mafia. They were first called. Yep. Who do you got, Max? Ball okay. and G. Uh, or... Before I before I go into picking three six, of course mm. I gotta send a big shout out to Eight Ball and MG because they were outcasts just before outcasts. A lot of people don't know that. 
they were outcasts yeah. just before outcasts you know what i mean like mm-hmm. they had before health the skelter if you're an east coast music fan you know Yo, what man, i mean like they were like the way april mjg did their thing was a little different from like rap duos we seen before like they were really really dope but three yeah. six come, come on, on rest in peace to gangsta boo and yes. lord infamous yes but and man Co- three six coopster oh coopster but yeah peace. come on they had so many cats shout out to lil white shout out to project Pat yes. You know yes, what I mean? Yes, like, cool. yes. <laughs> oh, Chicken head. <laughs> <laughs> and if somebody throws that on, it's like turning into oh, a karaoke man. joint right away, man. Buck, <laughs> buck, chicken, chicken, buck, buck, chicken head. Love that, too. Mm-hmm. All right, so we got two, two, oh, for three, six. For me, yeah, I'm going to do the same thing. I just have to give a big shout out to Ball and G. Mm-hmm. No, Pimp Hard. Pimp Hard. <laughs> Like, man, Space oh, Age man. Pimpin'. Oh, I, man. I always looked at MJG, too. I remember getting his album, the No More Glory album with the big Confederate yep, yep. flag on the cover. Yep, I remember that one. <laughs> and, uh, man, I was like, this dude is cool as shit. Like, I just thought he was so cool. Like, I was like, that is the dude right there. But I have to also go 3-6 Mafia. 3-6 Mafia was it. I remember when they said that this album, World Domination, was banned. And you remember that? And then so I was like, yeah, yeah, I yeah, yeah. Go get you, this. When they so, weren't allowed to get, play them down south because it was always a riot. Yeah. Yeah. So I went to Michigan because I would always I would always get all my albums in Michigan. I remember buying it, thinking I had to like hide it back to Canada. <laughs> so I, was like, <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna get in trouble for getting this three six album here. <laughs> but man, I was like, yeah, same thing. Rest in peace, Gangster Boo. I always had a thing for Gangster Boo. I don't know. Uh-huh. I just knew she liked white dudes, so I was like, okay, I could just see it in her eyes, Chico. And uh, so rest in peace to Gangster Boo, Coopsta, and uh, mm. Lord, Lord Infamous, Infamous for sure. Yeah, yeah. And uh, but yeah, three six. So that's that's a clean sweep. That's a clean sweep. All right, next thing I said. All right. So who do you think, this is old school Memphis, who do you think partied more in their, like their glory days, okay? So not 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 when they're falling down, but in their glory days, at the top of their game. Blue suede shoes, Elvis hey, Presley. Hey, hey. Elvis Presley, all right? Who do you mm-hmm. think party more, Elvis or Johnny Cash? Now, oh. now, side note, that he was born in Kentucky, but he is known to... Memphis was, you know, where he where he exploded. So we'll, we'll we'll say Memphis, okay? So we got Elvis Presley. Who partied more, Elvis or Johnny Cash in their in their heydays on top of their game? Who do you got? I'm, go, I'm gonna go with Elvis, man. I'm gonna go. Oh, with Oh, you gonna go with Elvis? Yeah, I'm gonna go with Elvis. I'll give you two reasons. They're nonsensical, but I'm gonna just hmm. say it anyways. The amount of girls that Elvis got. Mm. Oh yeah. What, it was... yeah. I mean, if tw- if we had Twitter back then. Man. This man would have been at least 200 million followers deep on Easy. Twitter. Oh, easy. And, and on, like man. 90% of them would have been women. The Come second on, thing I mean, is, man, my dad used to uh, actually sing in nightclubs and try <laughs> Come on. <laughs> and actually have his hair to fro and all that shit, just like Elvis, man. No way. So, yeah, that's a funny story for me personally. So wow. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ride with Elvis on that one, man. Yeah, you're going to Elvis, huh? Look wow. at his ass right here. That's when he had the, the, the pills in him. All right, one zero for Elvis. We got to get more so on another on another on another time. We need to talk about your pops. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's crazy right there. That's amazing. All right, yeah. All right, who do you got, Max? We got one zero for Mr. Elvis Presley. I'm gonna go with Johnny Cash. Hey, the original gangster in the music industry. Absolutely. Like, forget about it. Before Easy E was Johnny Cash, man. Mm. I feel like Johnny Cash probably partied in like bars, small bars that probably don't even exist anymore all over the country you know yeah. what i mean with, with hillbillies with hillbillies and black folks and mm. white folks and all kind of latinos and he probably like in those hole in the wall spots you know yeah. whereas yeah. elvis was just like elvis was an astronaut you know elvis you know he was living on another planet like elvis was the original yeah superstar you know but johnny cash was that like you know, almost, man. almost like an Irishman. You know, he was just getting into stuff. Man. <laughs> Absolutely. And so we got, we got, we got one for Johnny Cash, Cash. and and one for um for Elvis Presley. I, you know what I thought about this because I'm like these guys are legends. Like I can't even imagine. And you got Elvis like the ran super through. shiny superstar yeah. and the super grimy legend. Yes. Like you got a nice contrast right here. You know. So for me, for me, the mo- you nailed it actually. 
saying he was the original gangster, Johnny Cash. This guy, mm-hmm. this guy mm-hmm. went to San Quentin and did a show for the inmates and basically <laughs> shat on the guards while he was on stage. <laughs> He's basically telling them, come get me a drink and get these guys some drinks too, right? Oh, it was heroic, and, man. <laughs> and I said, listen, anybody that has a song that starts like this, we won't get in trouble for this, but hold on. That is the hardest start to a song. I don't care. <laughs> Ever. Let's just run that back one more time. Just... <laughs> and then he's got the girls in the back. Say hey. Quentin. Like, no. Oh, no. So he, he has that <laughs> song out. I don't care who you are. Johnny, Johnny Cash wins no problem. He's a thoroughbred. He's a Kentucky Derby winner. Just boom. That's it. That's a, yeah, that's a, you know, nah. that's a good choice. I, I don't think you can go wrong with either, you know? No, you, you can't. can't. I mean, it's Elvis. Yeah. It's Elvis. Like, what are you supposed to do? You know, we're picking the underdog by picking Johnny Cash for sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of partying with Blue Suede Shoes, uh, when Juicy J, you mentioned it, right? You're like, when they won the Grammy? Yeah, yeah. When 3 6 won the Grammy? He, he, uh, yeah, I saw, too. I saw Juicy J on Snoop's old podcast that he had where, he, what was it called? The GGN. And he yeah, still, yeah. he still had the Oscar with him. Yeah. And he was oh, still wow. partying. He's like, I'm still partying like I'm Elvis. Like, Blue Suede Shoes. <laughs> He's like, the episode yeah. with Brizza, absolutely oh, amazing. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. The GGN episode with Snoop and RZA just talking about how they built their crew, yeah. how Snoop built Dog Pound, and how yeah. RZA built the Whoop. I was, I was insane. The Snoop, <laughs> the GGN original with Sugar Free. That oh, was wow. my, that's my Ooh, favorite. Wow. Oh man, yeah, okay. Sugar Free is on there. Okay, oh, that was a good one. You guys listen to any uh, new rappers from Memphis at all, or like any new, new rappers? rappers? Yeah, man. Mm. I was from just Memphis? thinking about this. Yeah, because we're on that topic, right? Like for me, uh-huh. I brought up Young Dolph earlier, right? Rest in yeah. peace, Young Dolph. Rest like, in peace, Young Dolph. Me, for Young sure. Dolph is like one of the hardest rappers I heard out of the new guys, man. Like, yeah, yeah, Young I, Dolph was a leader of those of that new generation, for, without I mean, a doubt. I kind of stopped. He I'm was not like, old um, guy. I kind of stopped. Oh, you stopped? I yeah, stopped. but um, as far as like brand brand new guys, no, anybody newer than Dolph out of Memphis, I don't know. I haven't been yeah. keeping up like that. Nah, I'm still DJ Paul is the king of Memphis in my mind. <laughs> DJ uh, Paul, DJ Paul, DJ Paul. All right, so last one here. We're going. Uh, we're going. We're going to battle of the jerseys. Who has the hardest old school jersey? The Vancouver Ooh, Grizzlies, or of course the Purple Rain. Nice, Raptors. nice. Purple Dinos. Who do you got? <laughs> Raptors, These Raptors ones. all day. Not just because it's the hometown team, but man, back in the day they try to do that, you know, Canadian battle with Vancouver and Toronto. They try to make it a big TV deal. Yeah. And then mm-hmm. they wear the jerseys, and I just remember being like, yo, these jerseys are so sick with these dinosaurs. I, <laughs> I don't care, man. Right to me, that's top. the hardest jersey we had. I still hate the new jerseys we have because I'd rather see these old ones, man. That, me that's too. Just me. I don't even care if people won't disagree. That's just how I feel, man. Yeah. What about you, Max? Yeah, I have to go with the uh, with the Raptors jersey for sure. Yeah. It was a love hate relationship when they first bust them out. You're like, what? Man, <laughs> I was like, what are they trying to do? They trying to clown us? I was like, yo, what's Get going Isaiah on? Thomas out of here. Yeah, you know, and then like by the time like just as they started to fade out when we went to a, like another jersey, mm. I was like, damn, that was a great idea with yeah. that with the dinosaur yeah. and all the youngins and the um, just the uniqueness of it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm with you. But in this mm-hmm. one right here, let's give a shout out to that Sharif Abdul Rahim right there. And, okay. Uh, shout out to Sharif. Shout who, out to um, Sharif. Yeah, but and, and those ones are a little bit you see the old school one right here, like that's Vancouver one right there, right? Like that's not like the duplicate one that Memphis does now. There's a different tint to it. But anyways, um I'm going Raptors too. Like I don't need a long witted response. Like <clears throat> that's one of the that's the greatest jersey I think ever created. The spikes on Bar the no. back on the on the name. Like so, come on, forget about it. On. The pinstripe. Forget about it. All mm-hmm. right, boys. Let's get out of there. That was another episode of this or that brought to you by Popeye's supplements. 
All right, let's go around the NBA for a little bit to, to finish this off. I, I got a couple of notes I think maybe we want to touch. Actually, I only have one. See what you boys want to talk about. But there's some issues here with the Lakers and Darvin Ham, supposedly. There's there's some nobody's listening to coach. Coach doesn't like Hill. Would you call him Hillbilly Mamba? Uh, Hill, <laughs> Hillbilly Austin Kobe. Reeves. Hillbilly Austin Reeves, Kobe. that's Hillbilly Kobe right there. <laughs> He's a snake charmer, this guy. Or a snake <laughs> handler. Snake handler, <laughs> speaking in tongues. Yes, yes. Um, you I don't know have if you his guys own wanted... uh, reality TV show as soon as he retires, man. <laughs> Billy <Probably>. Kobe. <laughs> what do you boys think of that? That supposedly that rumor with Darvin Ham having issues. Uh, Goodness gracious! It's the Lakers, well, look... man. Everywhere this goes, like you know, it, it always goes back to the Lakers. I mean, listen, LeBron been playing GM for years with his yep. PR team, and yep. trying to say like, you know, I believe in my guys and this and that, and then the Lakers. This is the funny trend about the Lakers themselves. And I'm sure if you talk to any Lakers fan, any Lakers sports radio guy, they'll always say the same shit. At the beginning of the season, it's like, oh, the offseason was so great for the Lakers. How did, always. These, how did they get all these guys? Yes, like, yes, they have yes, some yes. amazing players. How and a few games into the season, it's like, oh, man, these guys are shit. Palenka's a <laughs> garbage GM. We need to make <laughs> a trade. Then he makes a trade. They come through at the end of the year, and then it's just a cycle. A cycle of this always. stuff, man. And you know what? The bigger thing for me is watching LeBron do that interview the other night. And he's brushing his hair. He's yeah, brushing no his hair. He has no hair, man. <laughs> like, oh. bro, you're like brushing what little you got left away, Goodness man. Crazy. He looked so frustrated doing he that. He was, too. man. And he's old, you know, like, so whatever, yeah. man. You got, that's why he went so hard in that tournament because he knows the team's garbage is not going to win the championship. So he went so hard to, yeah. to say, oh, you know, we won the in season tournament, man. We're the first Put it ones. in the rafters. You know, he, he just did that on purpose, man. No. Yeah. What I mean, about the Lakers? He, yeah. The Lakers got issues, bro, because when you watch them play, man, LeBron don't play no kind of D. No. He don't yeah. run back. He don't run back. No, he don't. And it's just a bad vibe, just like when the leader of the team is just like – and he complains to the refs a lot too. Oh, my God. And, that that three yeah. call that, that got called back, the way he reacted, like every game, he reacted every like game. a six-year-old. Remember, like, remember last year? Was it yeah. last year or the year before where he in went Boston. down on one knee like Boston. he was a preacher? Yeah. Like he was in a preacher <laughs> in church catching the Holy Ghost or something? Like, bro. What? You know, and it's like. And so I feel like when you're the leader of the team and it's just like, bruh. Like, yeah. bruh. Yeah. You're playing like you're literally playing half the game right now. I know you're yeah. old and all, but if you're old, then get out the way, old man. Yeah, every real. time, every time the Lakers make a comeback, LeBron's on the bench. I mean, yeah. nobody wants to say it, but the old man is in the way, and he's just out here stat padding. If you don't watch the games, it looks great. If you do watch the games, he's in the way. I can't. And Darvin Ham is going to get fired, and it's going to just be the same thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Whoever they yeah. bring in, who are you going to bring in? Like, who's going to help? What coach is going to fix this? Like, stop no it, man. No there is no I agree, coach. I agree no. with you, Max. No coach is going to fix this, man. Listen, the, the, problem is the, the problem is the roster. The, the other problem is they're trying to build around LeBron right now. And the mm-hmm. reality is this guy's only good for playoffs because he doesn't have the gas tank anymore. I don't blame him. The guy's old mm-hmm. as fuck. And he's, yeah. You know what? He's got a lot of miles on his body. He plays outstanding when he's into a game and he's got enough energy. Yeah. But you can't do this for 82, man. You're... you're pushing 40 man like it's amazing yeah. he's still playing to be honest yeah i'm just you, tired i'm just tired of him i want him you, i want you remember him to remember vince carter man. at 40 man vince carter at 40 looking like 73 lebron's looking like he's like 26 man yeah yeah no it's crazy yeah yeah well I, this guy you know what it bothers me talking about lebron so i don't even want to yeah, talk he's, about he's, he's a pr master uh what about anything that that's grabbed your attention around the nba right now uh, you guys i, I didn't uh they read a lot of notes uh, on this, but Wemby, uh, Wemby, uh, with his little restrictions now. Oh yeah, can't play him back to backs. Plays only twenty five minutes because Pop is just trying to dial it down. People are just shitting on Pop for that a little bit right now. Listen, I Pop, Pop for me is just being kind of tired and washed up for a while. Mm. Uh, I still think he's the best coach that the game has seen. I mean, I, I agree. Think most people would argue that that's okay, yeah. make it, but I think also he's getting old and like this is his last hurrah, but. He's got to he's got to let the let the young man go, man. There's no reason this guy shouldn't be playing 30 minutes, man. I get it, injury, you know, first few games, or whatever, bring him back. But this guy's like he's basically like Gumby, man. Like let yeah. him play for a bit, man. Let him develop. Like I don't understand this back-to-back resting shit. And the other thing too is on a note with that, Jack Vaughn pissed me off the other night because, and a lot of oh, people yeah. will know this stuff with the with the Nets. 
This guy opted to rest four out of the five starters. Mm-hmm. Then yeah, let, for that too. Yeah, then let Mikel Bridges and Cam Thomas play and mm-hmm. play them only 10 minutes mm-hmm. in the first quarter and then mm-hmm. said, no, you guys are never playing again. Listen, that shit is embarrassing, man. If people pay for tickets for that yeah. and they come yeah. to watch these guys and you play them for one quarter and then sit them because mm-hmm. you want to do some injury management, that's garbage, man. If that's I'm a, if I'm a father people, and I people say bet on these People bet on these games too. That's a whole other level. That's a whole... Different group of people you yeah, pissing yeah. off too, right there. Well, imagine right? you're a father and, you, and your son's always wanted to go to his first Nets game, right? And you save up your money, you know, you're blue collar, you don't got a lot of the money, so you're saving it all up. I finally got my tickets to take my boy over the mm-hmm. holidays to go see this, his favorite team, the Nets, play, and then nobody plays because of some bullshit move like this from Mr. Vaughn. Like, come on, man. So shout out on that note, shout out to John Morant when I see him huffing and puffing in the hallway yeah. and then yeah, go yeah, back yeah, and yeah. playing. For sure. There's certain players, uh, Ant Man is like that too, yeah. where they'll mm-hmm. grind yeah, it out. And you, off. Yeah, yeah. And, and they get hurt, they have things, but you just don't hear about it. Darren yeah, Fox. Yeah. 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 Darren, Fox you know, it's that. like Darren yeah. Fox, same way. They yeah. those guys Darren, get yeah. those guys go through stuff. You they you don't hear about it. They just play. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Well maybe maybe we, we touch on I don't know if you go, if <laughs> if you boys are over it yet, but Fact: Pistons broke their streak. And oh, it was like, uh, they so snuck was, that in that there, cool, and they got bl- and they got blown out the next game by Houston. Oh, and then OG got traded the next like, day. Just boom! I was like, "Yo, they really snuck away with the win." Look at yeah. these guys. They yeah. weren't on no way up. They yeah. just snuck away with the win. Yeah, I was cool yeah, with yeah. that loss, man, because I see it coming <laughs> from 500 miles away. Man. I wasn't mad. I wasn't mad at all. You know what? I'm I'm gonna be completely upfront, man. I, I knew mad. it was coming. Because yep. Raps oh. always either end a streak or start a streak. It's one of those <clears> two. <throat> so if there was ever a team to do it, it would be the Raptors. The other reason yeah. I wasn't mad, I was eating lobster and, and roast beef at the same time, man. <laughs> hey. I was in somebody's house. We were watching a game. I'm like, man, this lobster's <laughs> hey. good. I don't give a fuck if you're losing. Like, hey. I, man, I was, I was hey. super happy, man. man. Me, nice. me too. But Very every nice. real Raptors fan knew that L was coming. Oh, we oh. knew that L was coming. I guess I must be a fraud. I thought no, nah, we you were knew deep be down like, in no. your heart, Max. Come on, you maybe knew, I cl- I, maybe I closed my heart off, man, because I yeah. thought we were gonna be like, no, not us. Mm, but no, we I don't got no, why. we don't got no dog in us, though. We don't got you, no dog in you us. Know what, Max, that's that's that you know what yes, Max sir, is feeling yes, that way, man. Too many huh? Christmas movies before that, that game. <laughs> hey, I'm a <laughs> sucker for Christmas movies. <laughs> I'm a sucker for Christmas movies. Wait, what's that movie it's where he like, touches the... It's a wonderful life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, you're talking about... Um, <laughs> when he comes Chris. down the banister and he grabs the thing. Whoa, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> He's got the banister. <laughs> anyway, whatever that's that was. Yeah, that was a little too late for me even. Yeah, I, but it's a wonderful life. I like that one, though. Yeah. All right, and next Scrooge, game. And Scrooge. An elf, elf. I'm, I'm ready elf, to elf. show my daughter elf. I haven't seen elf. Oh, classic, but classic. <laughs> what? Uh, sit down, and watch that. Roll a spliff and watch elf. <laughs> tell me, tell me tomorrow you didn't enjoy that shit. <laughs> okay. Uh, next game we got Raptors in sack, 10 p.m. tomorrow night. Uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to this personally because I, I have a I have a real soft spot in my heart for sack since back in the day, since Mike Bibby days, since uh, since those days. I've always had a thing for since Shaq called me Queens. White chocolate, absolutely. Big, Sweet big breath. team. Legendary team. Legendary. So, and they Sweet got a real cool the bad years. shoulder. Mm. So, what are, you boy, what are you boys looking for in this one? Just a continuation Kentucky of the vibes or what? Kentucky versus Kentucky. I hey. want to see quickly match up with Fox. Because mm. quickly, when he was in his uh, sophomore year, he got matched up with Johnny Juzang, who was pretty high up in mm. Kentucky. Mm. I mean, they used to go out and practice. I want to see quickly versus Fox, man. I know a lot of these Kentucky guys go down back to the school during the offseason and face off against each other, face oh, off against epic. the new kids. I want to see that, man. I love that stuff. So. Beauty. What about you, Max? I'm following A-Rod's lead, and yeah. I'm going to be watching in the stands for Messiah Jury. And if he's going to be sitting next to any of the executives yeah. from Sacramento, <laughs> and I'm just going to say, hmm, hmm. you know, I'm just going to look at the background. And because, yeah. you know, it, I, I was watching a whole nother game and they were talking about the Raptors. And I think it was the Bulls where people are sitting around literally waiting for what the next trade's going to be. No, it's going to happen soon. Uh, my Personally, <laughs> me, I'm waiting to see Messiah get. Uh, get Keegan Murray on the Raptors. I want him to go in and just play this. <laughs> <laughs> and just take Keegan Murray from Sacramento and bring him right back and we'll say, you, we're going home now, Keegan Murray. You're coming home. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, <laughs> all right, let's go, boys.
Happy New Year to everybody, and I hope you had a safe and happy holidays. This was another episode, the first of 24, of the Sports Ethos Toronto Raptor Podcast. And wherever you're listening to this podcast, please hit like and subscribe. And if you want to put a face to the voice, check us out on YouTube. We have all the videos up. And once again, this was all for you. Oh, man. Uh.